Hey guys, this is Elliot the iPad Pro, and by the end of this tutorial, you'll have Python installed on your iPad or on any other device that you want. I'm going to show you how to use Python the way that professional programmers use it. So you're going to learn all the modern tools that the tech companies in Silicon Valley are looking for right now. You're going to hear like a lot of new words, so try not to feel overwhelmed. Even the professionals are having to scramble to learn all this stuff right now. What's Python and what's computer programming? When you think of a computer programmer, you might imagine a hacker stealing government secrets. Or maybe you imagine a few kids in a garage trying to change the world. Or maybe just a regular guy at Google making a ton of money. So programming is actually all of those things. It's a tool that lets you express yourself. It lets you be who you want to be. It's a way of sharing your ideas with the rest of the world. A lot of people think that programming is just math and numbers, but really the most important thing is creativity. Programmers are called developers because they create things. And once you become fluent in a programming language, the only limitation is your imagination. So what's a programming language? Well, Python, HTML, C++, Java, these are programming languages. These are the languages that developers speak in order to build things. Now, when you're a professional developer, you're going to have to learn multiple languages. But the best language to start with is Python. So why Python? Well, first off, it's super popular right now. It's the fastest growing language in the world. It seems like whenever new software comes out, it comes out for Python first. And there's a good reason for that. Python is way easier to learn than other languages. And you can do anything you imagine with Python. So how do you install Python? Well, that question doesn't quite make sense. Remember that Python is a language that developers speak. So consider a language that you speak, English for example. What do you do when you have to write an English paper? Well, usually what you do is you open an application, like Microsoft Word or maybe Apple Pages, and then inside the application you start writing your paper in English. Programming languages work the same way. You have to download an application where you can start writing your programming language. In this tutorial, we're going to install Jupyter and use that to run Python. So why Jupyter? Well, unlike all the other Python apps on iPad, Jupyter is a professional software that real programmers use. Jupyter has become the tool for data science. And right now, data science is the hottest thing in computer science. With Jupyter, you don't just learn Python on an iPad so you can later get a computer. You can get a job at a tech company in Silicon Valley using just your iPad if you have Jupyter on it. And my real goal is that when you get that job, your boss will look at you and say, wow, maybe I should get an iPad because this looks like a better way to program. Okay, so how do you install Jupyter? Well, that's close to the right question, but it's still just a little off. As you can see here, Jupyter is a website. It's a website where you do all of your computer coding. Now you're probably wondering, okay, well, where do I go to to find the Jupyter website? But the thing is, you don't go to the Jupyter website. What you do is you build and launch your own Jupyter website. So the big question is, how do you launch your own Jupyter website? And that might sound like it's hard to do, but it turns out it's actually really easy. And this is because of a new technology that's revolutionizing programming, and that's cloud computing. Now, cloud computing is when instead of using your own computer to build a website, you use a computer from Amazon or Google or Microsoft to build your computer in the cloud. So for this tutorial, we're going to be using Google Cloud. 
And once you build your Jupyter website in the cloud, you can then use your iPad to communicate with the website to do all of your programming. Okay, so let's launch a Jupyter website on Google Cloud so that we can do Python on our iPad. So the first step is to create a Google Cloud account. And you can do that by going to cloud.google.com or just like Google, Google Cloud. Once you're there, you can click the Try Free button. You can create your Google Cloud account using your Google email. The first year that you use Google Cloud is totally free. When you sign up, it'll ask for your credit card, but you won't be charged for anything until you like click a few extra buttons, so it's totally safe to use. When you finish creating your Google Cloud account, you'll come to the Google Cloud console. This is the home screen where you control everything on Google Cloud. It'll look something like this. Now, in the upper left-hand corner, there's the Options menu, and this shows you everything that Google Cloud can do. And as you can see, it can do a ton of things. But in this tutorial, we're going to only use two of Google Cloud's features. First, we're going to go down to Container Registry, and then we're going to activate that. So when you enable Container Registry, that allows you to take a pre-made computer with a Jupyter website on it and then launch that so that you don't have to build it yourself. After you enable the container registry, then go to Google Compute Engine and enable Google Compute Engine. Now, you can create your first computer in the cloud by clicking the Create button. This will bring you to an option screen where you fill out the information about what you want your computer to look like. This is where we will launch our Jupyter website on a Google Cloud computer. Okay, so let's name our first computer, My First Jupyter. Now, you can launch a pre-built Jupyter website by clicking the Deploy a Container Image VM. Now underneath there, you give the name of the computer, that's the Jupyter website, and that will be gcr.io slash pupster900 slash io. Then click advanced and then click the three check boxes. Now you can decide the size of the hard drive for your computer at the boot disk by clicking change. I usually like to use SSD drives because I find that they're a bit faster to use. Now click allow full access to all cloud APIs and then click the two check boxes that say allow HTTP traffic. That just allows it so that the computer can launch the website. Then click create and congratulations you just launched your first Jupyter website on Google Cloud. Now, this computer will take about 15 minutes to spin up, and then you can go to your Jupyter website. All right, guys, it's been 15 minutes, so now we can check out the website that we created. So, where is the website? Well, if we go to this thing that says external IP, that tells us the location of our website. And we can actually just click that to go to the website. The only thing is, it will say that the website's not reached, but that's just because it's going to HTTPS and then the IP address, where we just want to go to HTTP and the IP address. When we make that change, we are now at the Jupyter website. Probably the first thing you guys want to see is how to run Python inside Jupyter. And so just like how when you write an English paper, you open up Microsoft Word and then you create a doc file where you do your writing, in Jupyter you open up a file called a notebook file or a .ipynb file and then you do all your coding inside the notebook file. So to create the file, you click new and then you want to create a new Python 3 notebook file. This will open up a new tab. In the upper left hand corner, you can change the name of this file. Uh, let's call it my first Python. 
my first Python. And then you click rename. Now it's really easy to run Python code. You see the little blue cell right here? So tap inside of that cell and you'll see it turn from blue to green. This means that you're in the mode where you can write Python code. Now you can write something real simple like 2 plus 2 to see if Python will actually start doing some calculations. When you press shift enter you'll run the cell and you see that Python knows that 2 plus 2 equals 4. Now let's also try printing something to the screen. So to do that we can type print and then do parentheses and then inside those parentheses put quotation marks and inside those quotation marks type hello world. This is usually the first command that anybody runs in Python. Now we could press shift enter to run this command, but if it's easier you could also press the little play button next to the cell. And you see when we do that the screen prints hello world. I really want to show you guys more Python, but first we should finish setting up Jupyter. So it's important to know that the guys who created Jupyter did not think about using it on an iPad. So I created some extra software called IO that makes Jupyter work really well on an iPad and it takes like a minute to install. So to do that what you do is you click welcome to IO and then you click welcome to io.ipynb. IPYNB means that it's a Python file. So now when that file is finished loading, which is when you see this little white circle in the corner, you then click web. Now this is a Python file that I created that allows you to download IO. And as you can see, in Jupyter you can create some really cool stuff using just Python. Now when you click start, you'll install IO and it's as easy as that. You have finished installing my IO software. To see one of the cool things that IO does, let's go back to the my first Python file. Now let's create a new cell by clicking the little plus button in the upper left hand corner. Now tap inside the cell to start writing code. Now type percentage sign run space a tilde slash apps slash io underscore view slash embed dot ipynb. Then press the play button. Now we see that the file all of a sudden looks a lot prettier. If you want you can try playing around inside your Python notebook file. For instance as exercises you can try dividing 100 by 7 and you can try writing your first sentence in Python. So to wrap things up in this tutorial you learned how to create a computer using Google Cloud, how to run a Jupyter website, and then how to run Python inside of Jupyter. In the next tutorial, I'm going to really start diving into Python. If you guys like the video, definitely hit like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or are having any trouble, write a comment below. All right, this is Elliot the iPad Pro. See you guys next video.